How many of you have a GPS? The lying things. <clears throat> and if there's ever a place they can direct you to that's twice as long as it's where you're going, you know, and then you, you set it for where you're going. This is my destination. This is where life is. The Holy Ghost is sort of like your GPS. And said, so this, this is my life. I am headed toward manifesting the power of God. And I put it in my computer. And I'm driving down a highway of holiness. And I decide, I wonder what's over there. And I get off the beaten path. And while I'm over there, the GPS comes and says, recalculate. <laughs> but the way you know it's God talking to you, he'll say, recalculate. You're off track. Oh, okay. But if it's the devil, you dirty fool, you're in the wrong place. Once again, you have messed up in your life. You're never going to get on the right track. You'll never get to where you think you're going. You were cursed from the beginning. Praise God, you worthless thing. And I'm a worthless thing, and I got off the highway, and I just wanted to see what was over here. I was just curious. Oh, now you moan and groan, you despicable creature. You know, and they said, that's the Holy Spirit correcting me. Listen, any voice that comes to you to condemn you, you have not heard God. Anything that finds fault with you. Now, God will bring correction, but not rejection. Amen. There is a difference between condemnation and conviction. And if you say, I've been convicted because I feel miserable, you have not heard God. He is going to speak to you and say, if you don't want to, if you don't want to be sick, you're going to have to change um, possibly the way you're eating, possibly the way you're acting. You know, give some considerations. I'm going to give you some facts here. and But you have to be the one to have the courage to move in the direction of the answer. Many of us self-sabotage because we don't want to change. <laughs> we just want to wake up. And say, the grace of God did it all. Well, he, he's making you a companion of like nature and ability, and you have to be discipled. This is what the word says. I am victorious, according to 2 Corinthians 2.14. It says, now thanks be to God, who always, all the time, every time, causes me to win. Amen. Waters are flowing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> told you, told you I was leaking up here. <laughs> so... The, the scripture says here that God always causes you to be victorious. He causes us in triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Do you believe that? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Do you believe you're beautiful? Do you believe you're wonderful? Do you believe you're talented? Are you happy about you? I just curse that ego devil out for you. Praise God. Now, see, that's the, that's the diversity where you get, oh, I'm so wonderful and marvelous. You know, I get, yay. I did a conference in Malaysia. It was so funny. And it was called the Esther Generation. And it was about Queen Esther. But it looked like the estrogen. <laughs> they wrote it on a big banner. And it looked like the estrogen generation. You know, it's just like, <laughs> that is not exactly what we're looking for. So, we're not saying we're so great and wonderful because we're female. We're because we are born again is what makes us great and wonderful. And if I put my, my, you know, we're all black, we're all white. You put your stuff in foolishness like that, that has nothing to do with your greatness. Amen. The root of all culture is cult. So, you know, you think, well, I'm going to preserve my culture. You, God's got a culture and he'll preserve that. Praise God. I don't know what else I can drop. This is such a little thing up here. Praise God. It takes a lot of room for me. Thank you, Teddy. She's got the magic oil. Praise God. Listen, 1 Peter 2.24. Are you learning something? Okay, 1 Peter 2.24. I am dead to sin. I don't, I don't know. You're free to be who God made you to be. You need to be transparent. You need to be real. You need to be authentic. Amen. And you need to learn how to talk to people. You need to be able to say tricky things like, hi. 
<laughs> and acknowledge the presence of people when they come around you. Don't ignore them like they're little robots, you know, like this. And so nobody, talk. I don't know who they are, so I'm not going to speak to them. My friend Pam Chesbro from California, and she came down to Louisiana for a while. So did John. They came down and lived with us for a while, and we got to travel, do all kind of great things here. I'm going to ask him to share something just a minute, and it'll surprise you. But when you get to know people, and she came down, we'd gone to the grocery store together, and we passed people, hey there, how you doing? Good to see you today. Yeah, having a good time, feeling good. You feel, you, oh, people come to me and say, I got these fever blisters, what do you think? And I said, look like herpes to me. You know, it's just, <laughs> but it's, um, you got to be interested in people. You got to be smiling, look like you're up to something. Life draws life, amen? And I'm speaking to everybody. She said, do you know all these people? I said, I've never seen them in my life. And she said, well, I want to tell you something. When you come to California, don't do that. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said, you run around talking, hey there, how you doing? She says, they're going to think you crazy. Are you up to something? It's just, and I said, see, you have to cross-pollinate and bring the things that you see that work. And I just want to encourage you that, that in a group like this, when we have our lunch, I don't know what time it is. Okay, it's 11.30. Oh, praise God. I will be through. You get it translated. Praise God. <laughs> now, this is for those of you who are daily crucifying yourself. You know, just uh, I'm bearing my cross and I'm dying daily. Okay. Put this in your pipe. According to Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been. Is that past? Okay. I have been crucified with Christ. So it is no longer I who live, but now it is Christ that's living in me. And the new life, which I now live, I'm living it in my flesh, but I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Jesus didn't die for me. He died as me. So I just look like a woman. <laughs> this is my earth suit. This is my container. This is where God lives. Behold, the dwelling place of the Most High God is in Zion. You are Mount Zion, the dwelling place of God. He's in there. It's like Prego. It's in there. Praise God. Quit asking him to fall on you. He's not falling. He's flowing. He's already come down. Now he wants to come up. Do you understand? And let God arise. And then the enemy is scattered. And the enemy, you know, we, we get to thinking, oh, the devil can do this and the devil can do that. Now hear this. The devil is defeated. He has no power except what you give him. Give him nothing, regardless of what the facts look like. Facts and truth are not always the same. The facts may be a little bit more, but the truth is I am healed, I am delivered, and I am rich. Need to talk. Listen, I, I like to talk to my money. I think I told you all I have two dogs, one named Money, and the other one is named Debt Free. I learned to talk right. Now, Money is 15 years and 10 months, and she's got a little age on her. And George said to me, that's my husband, he said, honey, you know, money's getting old. I got old money. <laughs> he said, if the Lord called your home while you're gone, what do you want me to do? I said, sucker. You raise that dog from the dead. You hear me? <laughs> you, have to say, you, you give her a mouth to mouth of whatever she needs. <laughs> <get a break. laughs> All this talk about how powerful we are. Don't you let my dog die. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't it amazing how attached we can get to animals? I'm doing a series with. Uh, Sid Roth on It's Supernatural, and we're going to start a, a, 
it's a weekly program for 30 minutes. And what I do is what I'm doing right now. I'm talking it. Yeah, it's going to be good. Be good. He said that our, we are really targeting the Middle East. And he said that uh, we, uh, he said, your viewing audience, well, your potential is 50 million people that are just going to hear me do what, what I'm doing with you. I just tell stories and then I provoke people to believe that God loves them here and that even in the midst of their foolishness, God still loves them and that I am crucified with Christ. I am alive with Christ. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, we have made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. It is the great G-R-A-C-E, God's... What did it come on? God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I am already reconciled to God, according to 2 Corinthians 5.18. Now I can come boldly into the presence of God. I can just boldly come in. And it's not brassy bowl, it's gold bowl, because he's invited me. So the way I come in is I come in, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's me again. So in the morning when I'm saying my prayers and I get my checkbook out and it lies to me a lot. <laughs> and you, you can't believe, you can't believe that. So somebody sent me, um, I, I know the power of tambourine. The scripture tells you that every time you shake a tambourine, God lays a hammer on the devil's head. Don't you love that? See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. So, and, and he says, cry aloud, you inhabitants of Zion. So I got this, this lady sent me this tambourine. And when you shake it, it lights up. You know, ding, a ding, a ding, a ding. You know, it's just what I shake it and it goes ah, like this. And I'm going, ah, and and the the neighbors they don't know what's going on they don't know they think george is beating me but that's the but people have to believe what they have to be i need release you know and they go and my husband say honey How can, we, how can we be awakened to the gift of God? How can, what can I say to you? What can I do to you today to beat the devil off of you? The, the unbelief, the frustration, the limitation. You know, can, can I do something to you that will shake you and say, oh my God, I've been unbeliever. And, and I'm looking at my checkbook and I'm saying, you rascal, you lying devil. Get off my money. And little money's on one side and debt free's on the other. They know how to pray. Because I'm saying, come here, money. Roll over money. Deposit money. Yeah. Learn how to talk. You need to buy you a goldfish and name him prosperity or something. You know, begin to talk like you believe something's going on. So the word of God says, I am free. I'm free to be me, John 8, 31, 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you will abide in my word, oh, you mean there's a process here? Are you a process preacher? Well, there are some ifs. If you do this, then I'll do that. So I found... I can no longer afford the luxury of, of disagreeing with God. So this is some things that I wanted to tell you. I was, um, I, I just love this. This is going to make you so, so happy. I'm not going to tell that story. Okay. Um, I made it, I was doing this tele, teleconference and people was on there and I began to prophesy vast amounts of wealth. And this lady was, I uh, said, now you guys, if you're going to pay to listen to me talk, you need to pay attention. And then, because, I mean, this is an investment that you've made. You spent money to come here today. You need to get your money's worth. Amen? So you have to choose to understand, to comprehend, to believe, and to receive the decrees of the prophet. I am decreeing over you and I, vast amounts of wealth to be released supernaturally. Can that happen? Is it just my word or is it God's word? Believe the prophet and what will happen. 
I'm telling you, God, he, he would send me here to tell you, you, you're not sick. You're not poor. All of your children are disciples taught of the Lord and with great peace and undisturbed composure. And when you get off the beaten path, the Holy Ghost is going to say something like, recalculate. <laughs> Instead of, you idiot, when you begin to get... <laughs> get these condemning voices that said, well, I, you knew you couldn't do that business. You knew you couldn't do this or couldn't do that. But this lady, you're just going to love this. Um, let me get over where I can find it. I've got so many testimonies, so many wonderful testimonies. Okie dokie. There's this woman that was on the line, and she, she said, I just don't know what I can do. Uh, I just want to... I want to do something in the kingdom of God. I just love God, but I don't know what to do. And I said, well, I said, then I'm going to prophesy to you. you you've got this incredible gift that God's going to just put upon your life. And here it is. Oh, my goodness. I need two hands here. There we go. All right. This, this little boy, Teresa's testimony, and... She, this woman called and she said, let me see here. There's some real incredible things here. Praise <laughs> God. Okay. I asked for prayer for my uncle who was in ICU. He had a stroke. He could not speak. His carotid artery was 100% blocked on one side. Surgery was 100% unsuccessful. And I called you, and you sent me a prayer. And you sent me a prayer cloth into the ICU. And I took it, and I took it, and I took it, and I took it. Listen, it's an action. I, I did my part, and she said, you sent me a prayer, and I came into agreement, and two witnesses while touching my uncle. In 24 hours, they had to completely see what had happened. He was singing praises songs to the Lord. He was walking. He went home. He could talk. He could walk. He could sing. And I told my uncle it was going to be a miracle, miraculous recovery so others can see that we house a supernatural God and the power of prayer, the power of prayer. This is just absolutely, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Um, my my son, Paul, is six and a half years old. Within two years, he collapsed three times in the nursery and more times at home. These collapses continued to increase. He would lose consciousness. The cardiologist said these collapses were caused that he had a deviant heart rhythm because of the heart rate time has prolonged 56% in my son's heart. This is a doctor's report here. The doctor said that the next collapse, we could definitely lose our son, that he could not live, and neither could he take the medicine. When I saw my son collapse, then I decided to give him the medicine anyway. This this means that he has to take medicine to the end of his life. He has this deviant cord in his heart that makes sounds and gurgles when blood hits it. Please pray for his complete healing. Dear Dr. Fluid, yesterday my son had a medical checkup in Budapest. The best and more well-known cardiologist said that my son's heart has been totally healed and they cannot explain it. It is no longer necessary for him to take the medicine. And I asked the doctor to write it down. We are so very happy. All the way back home, we were worshiping Jesus for this miracle. Thank you again for the power of prayer, of teaching us how to pray, of teaching us to pray the word of God. You have to activate. You have to ratify. 